Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll take a look at the different kinds of layer types. Corel Painter has a few different kinds of layer types, and uh, if you're working with Painter for the first time, they can really make your life very difficult when you're just trying to do painting. Uh, you might have these little dialog boxes that pop up that say only liquid ink can be used on a liquid ink layer and only watercolor can be used on a watercolor layer and things like that. Well, that's because a few of these um, mediums here have their own special layers. So when you use them, uh, it's going to create a special layer for them that's different than your normal average layer. And it's going to insist that you only use that particular medium on that particular layer. So let's do one for instance one of the more common ones, the real watercolor brush here. And let's get a light fringe brush. And I don't have to create a new layer. It will automatically be created for me if there's not already a watercolor layer present. So I'm going to start painting. Let's use yellow. And let's just paint with this brush. And you can see as soon as I start painting, it's created a new watercolor layer for me. Now, this is a special layer. It's different from just your average layer. If I create just a new basic layer, you can see the icon is different. The watercolor layer has this little blue uh, rectangle on it, and the regular layer doesn't. I'll just rename it default layer. Um, if we go to the watercolor layer and we try to do something like blend it using a blender, we get this error. Only watercolor brushes can be used on watercolor layers. Okay, let's try to use the scratch board tool. Nope, we can't use that. We can't use this airbrush. Uh, we can't distort it. We can't do anything. All we can do is use a watercolor brush, and that's fine. We can use a watercolor brush as much as we want. And the reason why this is happening is because the wa these real watercolor brushes uh, they have this special effect where the water kind of blends and bleeds together. And while it's doing that, uh, your computer kind of keeps track of how wet the paper is and all these different things. So to have that functionality, it needs to be set to this special mode. Now, if you wanted to blend this, what you have to do is essentially, um, to put it in other terms, wait for the paint to dry or dry it automatically. So what you have to do is you have to convert this watercolor layer into a default layer. And you can do that pretty easily by going uh, here to the uh, little submenu and then select convert to default layer. And now this watercolor layer, the icon changes and it just becomes a regular layer. It still says watercolor layer, that's just the name of the layer. But when the icon is changed, you'll know that it's just a regular layer. And now if we go to try to blend it, we can blend it just fine. We can do anything we want to it because it looks like watercolor visually when we look at it, but it no longer has that watercolor functionality. So we wouldn't be able to further manipulate it, it's it's dry at this point. Whereas if we go back and we do some undos, so I'm back here to this step here where it's still a watercolor layer now, I can still use a watercolor brush on it to add to it. So now it's wet again, basically. So while it's a watercolor layer, the watercolor is wet. If you dry it by converting it to a default layer, it's no longer wet anymore. So then it's dry and then you can of course blend it. So you have to watch out for that, especially if you're getting that warning message. Now you know why you're getting it. There's some other uh, categories that do that. Liquid ink is one of them. So let's get a liquid ink brush here. And I'll just go ahead and start painting and it'll create a new layer automatically. Now it's the same thing with this ink. This ink is wet. So it's doing this special processing to make it look more like ink. And if we use a eraser, an ink eraser, not a regular eraser, it'll do this special thing where when you erase, it kind of 
does this kind of liquid effect. You can see it's kind of pooling. So that's the functionality of the ink here. Now if we try to blend it, we get the same thing we got with the watercolor. We can only use liquid ink brushes on liquid ink layers. So we have to dry the ink if we want to be able to blend it. And I'm saying drying, I'm using that just as a term that everybody can understand. But again, it's in this submenu here and it's called convert to default layer. And that just, you know, it removes all of that liquid ink functionality. So now if we were to erase or do anything to it or blend it, we can do that. If we erase it with the eraser, we just get regular erasing effects. We don't get that uh, ink effect. So what you have to do here then is you have to go in and use these particular kinds of brushes intentionally and just kind of watch out and realize that if you are getting this warning dialog, now you know why. But also, you know, just try not to use them in a way that where they're really going to make it harder for you to paint. Um, I rarely use this liquid ink brush. I can see in some ways where it would really be fun to use and, you know, I'll definitely use it when the time comes. Um, the watercolors I use a little bit more, but I generally don't mix watercolor with anything else um, unless I was maybe going to use it as a, like a texture on top of something. If I'm going to work with watercolors, I generally just work with watercolors. Um, and then that makes it easier. All your layers are watercolor layers. I might dry some of them now and then depending on how I'm constructing the painting. But for the most part, I find it's just easier just to just only work with watercolor brushes. Um, you know, maybe adding some layers here and there it just makes it much easier. So I hope this clarified the different layer types um, and how they work. It's probably uh, making it way easier already on you to paint when you're not getting these really annoying uh, pop-up dialog boxes like this. And now you know why they're happening. So if you have any other questions about layer types, uh, feel free to comment on this video, and if you found this information useful, take a minute to share this video or like it on YouTube, and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my next video.